excellent uh, presentation and discussion. And then we have right. a question from the, the audience. Is that anything yes. else? Yeah. All right. All right. So that's the procedure. Now, 20 minutes were not enough, you were saying. Um, I think 20 minutes is fine. Okay. Let's try to get that. 20 minutes should be finishing now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's finished. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to start. Uh, is start the recording? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this presentation, presentation uh, it's about monitoring the user experience and interac uh, interaction for mobile video streaming services. Um, before I start, I want to say it's a special thank to anyone to make it possible. Especially to my supervisor, Pietro Longalo and Samuel Salizega. And also for Christopher Vienna, who unfortunately cannot be here. Kamal, Luis, uh, Udan, who make the idea possible. And all those friends. Thanks. This is the index about the presentation of today. First, I'm going to say a little bit of introduction about background. That, uh, about background. The later, I'm going to uh, analyze the YouTube app application on Android. And after that, we are going, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about my, uh, the protocol the prototype implemented for to monitor YouTube on Android and follow, followed by evaluation. Then later, some scenario where this data could be useful. And finally, I'm going to say the conclusions. Introduction. Internet is a place where the data grows very fast. This is the uh, forecast done by Cisco on the beginning of this month, June of uh, 2011. Uh, the so data can be uh, aggregated easily from different sites, from different types. We have file sharing, internet video, web-made data, uh, video coding, online, online gaming, voice over uh, IP, and others. From this graph, we can see that uh, the tendency of internet video is very, uh, is very, um, is very high. It's going to high to grow very much from uh, from 2010 to 2015. Uh, that means it's uh, on 2015. It's going to be like uh, 33,620 petabytes per month. This is one petabyte is roughly like one million gigabytes, which is huge. If you go to a little bit deeper, uh, we can see the internet video section. You can classify them by short form, long form, internet video on TV, live in internet on TV, ambient video, in the uh, internet video PB, PBL, and mobile videos. Uh, this last one is especially interesting because the, the ground is the, of uh, the uh, compound annual ground rate is the is the faster one, 108 percent. This means that it duplicates uh, every every year. It, every year, it's this one here. By final of 2015, it's uh, it's going to be like 3,333 3, petabytes, which is a lot of data. The problem, the question now maybe is. Uh, Either operators prepare for this? Do they have enough infrastructure or resources to manage this kind of the so huge uh, data traffic? Uh, the data traffic, uh, like we know, we can expect that uh, when more data the user consume, more revenue we uh, we gain from the operators, because that's uh, less, that could be the normal tendency because they have to uh, use that uh, money to invest on opex and capex. It's in order to maintain this infrastructure and uh, invest more, most, uh, invest uh, more infrastructures, but uh, from the one of the studies done by uh, Asisio, um, this is from the March of 2011. The, they have uh, checked the price plan in U.S., U.K., Singapore, and Australia. From this graph, we can see that uh, in U.S., U.K., and Singapore and Australia. More, uh, most of them is uh, they have data uh, flood, flood rate of more than five gigabits of video. This means that they can consume more than five gigabits of uh, of, int of mobile data without pay us anything extra. So this one is the maybe the best situation for the mobile operators, which which in US is just, just two per, two percent. This situation is very critical. This means that uh, uh, the total graphic is growing like this in this way, but the, the revenue for the telecommunications is, is growing uh, is growing not so uh, not fast enough to to feed this gap. So this gap for, with the time is going to, uh, to, uh, to be bigger and bigger.
And this is what was one of the uh, most important challenges. The solution could be we can try to lower the cost of the traffic and increase the value of it and the revenues. How to do that? Uh, from one of the slides of uh, Jen Sender, who's director of this whole department, is there. And he's proposed some solution like uh, for more revenues, we can explore existing uh, infrastructure more efficiently and uh, better user experience, long, long battery life. For by another side, we have a lower cost of bandwidth, which could be uh, efficient resource management, infrastructure sharing, and efficient development. Uh, due to the limitation of this master, this master thesis, which is 20 weeks, uh, I'm going to focus on this part, which is uh, consists uh, explore existing infrastructure more efficiently. Speci uh, concretely, I'm going to focus on video, video mobile phone. Uh, how to explore existing ex infrastructure more efficiently? By one side, uh, the mobile operators should know what infra infrastructure they are, uh, which how much bandwidth they, ha they have in, in concrete moment. And this is a study by them, uh, can be done by themselves because they, they manage the all resources. And by another side, um, they should know uh, who, who and how is consuming their data. How they are going to be explored this is, uh, is, the main, is the question right now for the uh, user behavior. Uh, it's, going, it's like how the user interact with the videos. Does most of the user watch the videos at the same time at the same place? How predictable are their behaviors? Um, could prefetching uh, improve the quality of service and quality of uh, experience? Uh, I hope my, my tool can help to answer those questions. Uh, from this point, I'm going to explain the methodology that I have followed for, uh, to, uh, to have this, such kind of tools. Uh, first, I have done some kind of market analysis to see which kind of the, operate, uh, which kind of the smartphone uh, is dominating the market and which kind of the video, draf uh, uh, video traffic on the internet is, is the best one to see, in, to see better the influence. And later, I have lecture review to see uh, which kind of the data is better for uh, to be saved in that sense, uh, to make the, this information more open, more easy, understandable, and uh, be uh, easy shared. Then I then I analyze the, the application, which is YouTube, which is run in in, in Android. And after that, I, pro I implement a prototype and I evaluate it. Uh, this is the second part of the presentation, YouTube and Android. Uh, first, I start with the uh, YouTube user case. I'm sorry if uh, this slide cannot see quite good, but uh, we can see this uh, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven type of uh, uh, using, uh, user cases. The first one could be minus video. The user can uh, record video, search video, play a video, and flag a video, set the video like favorites on YouTube. And the second one is handler video. To keep, uh, the user can play videos, uh, store videos, set quality of video, or see caption of videos. And then later, the rest of things will be manage the channel because each user in YouTube, YouTube is uh, considered a channel. Uh, manage the account, log in, log out, get information about a concrete uh, video, a concrete uh, user, or also change, change settings. From this, I have draw a very uh, big uh, state chart of uh, YouTube application, which is here. In this stage, <coughs> uh, I have seen that the YouTube application highlight have uh, 44 general states. It starts with the main screen, which, uh, the sc which is the screen which is showed uh, when you are logging for the same time or when you enter the application and then finish again when in the main screen because uh, for example if you start a new video you're going to go back to again to this this screen so I consider like uh, the, the main screen like the, the first uh, the start, start point and the end state and also the, in Android the user can exit in any moment because they can press the a physical button it's like home here and the exit application in any moment uh, uh, other thing than general state, there are two uh, general stat statuses. If the YouTube application is launched or is finished. Also, two modes: login and logout. In fact, all the action that you can do in logout can be uh, done also in login. This is why this in this graph, we, I just have uh, 
loading loadings for the user. Also, two parallel actions is, which is related to when you upload to video. So when you are try to see to upload some videos, it opens an extra uh, browser where where it's going to work parallel while you are you can interact uh, with the video with the with the YouTube application. Uh, with the, all this uh, information in mind, I have uh, implemented a prototype. This is the basic scheme of my, my prototype. It's based on the idea that all the Android program generally locks. I don't know if uh, you know what I exactly the locks or not. Okay. Locks like uh, the like some way the glue that the program left to see how uh, which state that it it is. Okay. And it's important that to say that this kind of loss is captured inside another Android application. So uh, while running a, in a, any Android application, I can set a command which is exactly like execute some command in Linux. So with that command, I can I can watch uh, indefinitely all the logs that generates. Based on this idea, I've implemented uh, the YouTube monitor activity, which is the screen that you show uh, that you see when you launch the application. This activity, uh, maybe it's better if I can show this slide first, the second one. Uh, this, uh, this activity, this is the activity you, uh, I say at the beginning. You have the three buttons. Uh, start monitoring, stop monitoring, exit. Nothing else. Everything is very simple. Uh, start monitoring, I like actually say start monitor and stop monitoring, stop monitoring. And exit is when you exit this, this screen. It doesn't mean that you are going to exit completely the monitoring process. Okay, when you uh, press on the button Start Monitoring, you are going to run two different services. The services are the, are the component which is run in background in Android, which, uh, if, which even when you don't, you don't have the, script, the application show in the screen, okay, they can still run in, the, and, and, and in background. In this case, we have two, two services, the basic state and the general state. The device states uh, get all the information related to the device, like uh, a mobile phone operators, like the place, the cell ID that the, um, the user is, is, the device is connected, uh, network information, uh, the, phone, the information about phone, all these kinds of things. It's important to say that uh, the, the device state monitor constantly the, all the cell ID that the user, user device is connected. With that cell ID, we can uh, see where the user is located. Okay, in the general services, it, it start uh, creating some a uh, one thread which uh, which get information from the main main log log, log file, which is uh, even logs. Uh, which which one is uh, this could be the motor of the engine which uh, uh, which run that uh, say all the state that it, the YouTube uh, application is, is is passing. So with this, it it start create a, a some. Special thread, which is see a special all the, all the logs generated by YouTube, and then later another background, which you see the rest of of uh, logs. Oh, from all the data they get, they will send uh, like in LDF format to a broadcast receiver, which which uh, is the only one which interact with LDF database. In this case, we don't have any query because what we do is just save data in database. So this broadcast receiver is a loss. A little bit more about LDF database. Um, LDF is a is a knowledge representation, uh, which uh, represents all the knowledge by three different uh, objects. We have a subject, predicate, object. An easy example is sky is blue. Sky is object, is is predicate, uh, and object is uh, is blue. It's very simple because it just has three notions. Uh, just no more, no more thing than that. Uh, this, uh, for the creator of LDF state that all the knowledge can be just composed in these uh, three notions. And it's also very powerful because it's universal. It uses UI to make its LDF unique. So all the data we have in the database is unique in the world. And we can make sure, uh, I'm, make, I'm sure about it because I'm using the you are of the custom project to start from the like the first string to, to use and then later I attach the information after it. So I I don't think that's an, uh, because you are unique in the uh, the of, of the custom is unique in the world. So all the data I generate is unique in the world. Uh, 
With this uh, dev database, I have implemented it has just one table and four groups. It's very, uh, it will make it very simple to see. Evaluation. After the, I have implemented the, uh, the prototype, I have evaluated it. And this is the single state evaluation, which means that uh, which based on the transition of, of all the states, all these transitions, uh, I have to make a one by one and see which state that it can put on. And with all the possibilities down, I have uh, classified them by transition between states, general status, modes, other actions, internal state, and information obtained. Uh, you can, as you can notice, there's 9.49% uh, of the transition between states not detected, and just several 5% um, of internal state not detected. This, this 9.49 percent of transition between states correspond to the state 5 shown keyboard. Keyboard is one of the things which is harder to detect because the keyboard could be different depending on the location of the region of the each user. Different user can have different character and different type of input, which is no make make it no generic. It's very hard to instead uh, to uh, to see all the keyboard that is possible around the world. Because it's just a prototype, I'm not going to in, in go uh, to do so much enforce on this. And then for internal state, the five person uh, that cannot be uh, monitor and cannot be cannot be monitored, I correspond to settings. Uh, as I said, I'm using some kind of with some the method called logs. Uh, the thing is, when the user changing settings, it doesn't generate logs. Logs. So from this point of uh, from the point of view of log, it's not possible to monitor it because there's no data generated. But I can see uh, I can say that uh, if we we use another method which uh, uh, which can we see the information change of the internal information internal files, we can see also the settings. Uh, user case evaluation. The second one, the last uh, evaluation I have done is based on 18 set of the states of the evaluation that uh, based on the user cases. Um, as, I, as I explained before, this 1.45 person and this 26.32 person I correspond to the uh, to show keyboard and the settings. Uh, once the evaluation is done, I want to say I want to explain some scenario which this data could be uh, useful and help to answer the question that we have we have before. The first one is geog geographical usage. Uh, in this uh, in this picture, we can see that in this place, well, well it, it doesn't exist that well. I need it here. Uh, from, because we have location of each user, we can see uh, from uh, concrete regions which video is watching by exactly what moment. So with this information we get, uh, we can group the user by regions, and uh, the size of the region could be depends on number of the base station that each operator has. And by saving mo uh, most of the, co uh, of the common type of videos, we can calculate uh, the video that is going to be requested and which that data base station. If, uh, then the data, this video can be cached in the base station. Then when the users request this information, they can, uh, they, the connection just will be uh, between the user and uh, the base station. No, no more traffic will be generated. Well, if, in case in the, if, the, well, if the prediction is, is right. Another one is uh, if we focus on a concrete user, we can uh, roughly watch the movement that this user is is, uh, is doing. From this uh, in this example, this user is going to Lapis to Sista, and this is all the place that he have traveled. With the same information, we can see that all the video that he have uh, he have uh, watched uh, on these different uh, places, and with that we can update the data uh, constantly. And the saving the most common places that this user is watching video, and uh, feeding uh, by feeding the information on the database um, um, uh, on the uh, base sorry uh, by feeding the information in the base station where the, this user usually uh, connect, we can uh, in some way prevent uh, if the data uh, the, uh, the data traveling between the base station and the core network just by saving them. Uh, saving first information in the base stations. The another scenario where we can use is about time. 
from the con for a concrete user, we can see more or less the probability that this user uh, was a video. This is a graphic of from the zero uh, from out zero to out twenty three. We can see that this user uh, usually towards the video and from seven to eight o'clock and from eleven to twelve o'clock and after also after seven o'clock. With this kind of information and uh, knowing this, which kind of video that use, this user you, uh, usually watch, you can even save the data in his mobile phone before he requests it with certain probability. So if, if the probability is high, we can, uh, the, the user doesn't have to request more information because this information I have stored before that he requests in his mobile phone. So for the conclusion part, I want to say that my most my contribution could be that I have demonstrated that it's possible to monitor the user act, uh, actions without direct direct interaction with them. By this, I see I want to say that the logs are totally transparent to the users. If once the application is running, the user doesn't have to interact more with the monitor ap application. He just have to uh, press the button start monitoring, and everything every process will run in background and save in the database. Mm, the future work that I can do, uh, that we can, which can do, it could be uh, the early, early data analysis uh, because there's a we generate a huge amount of data, just uh, some information that could be hidden between them. So if uh, we can automatize autom the analysis of this data, we can try. To, we can have more information, and then with that information, uh, we can have better inf user information. So, uh, at time, you know, I'm. Of this master thesis, there's a new version of YouTube launch. Uh, like everyone knows, that uh, the mobile, uh, the life cycle of mobile uh, applications very, uh, is very fast. It, it launch the application after uh, very, uh, they update very, very fast. So now I think I have 2.1.6 uh, of uh, YouTube, which is running right now. And for the last version of Android, uh, which is 2.3.4, uh, the new version of YouTube is. Uh, it's installed by the Google by the Android, so it cannot be uninstalled. So maybe the net we can focus uh, the future world is better. It's it's based on the new version of YouTube. Also, other videos application could be monitorized. The world is not just about YouTube, just other things. For example, Netflix is going to launch the the Android and the iPhone version of of their services uh, here in Europe. So with right, uh, when next fleet come here, it could be very interesting to also monitorize his its applications. So I finish. Any question? Yeah, uh, uh, can you stop the video?